OpenAI just put not one, not two, but three brand new models into their AI coding tool Codex. And this totally changes how you're gonna use Codex. In this video, I'm gonna go through all three new ChatGPT 5.1 models they put inside Codex. I'm gonna show you how to use them, when you should use them, and a new workflow you can deploy in Codex today that will get the most out of these models. I'll also let you know what I think about Codex versus Claude Code and which you should be using. Whether you've never used Codex before in your life or you are a Codex master, I promise if you stick with me until the end, you'll get a ton out of this video. Let's get into it. So just announced moments ago, we've upgraded all our models in Codex. You can now get three new models, ChatGPT 5.1, the model we just talked, about 5.1 Codex, which is their version of 5.1 that is built for coding, and GPT 5.1 Codex Mini, which is built for coding but works a lot faster. These are three brand new models that have three very distinct purposes for coding. I'm gonna go over the differences between all three, but you have very specific use cases you wanna do with each. Here's my breakdown of all three before we jump into Codex, and I'll build an app live with them showing you when you should use each. So you have your regular 5.1, which you've been able to use inside ChatGPT for a day now. You use this for planning mode. And I agree, based on all my testing I've been doing here, 5.1 is the best creative partner and planner I've ever used in my entire life. I've been using it basically for the last 24 hours straight, and it has completely retooled how I do my business and all the products I'm coming out with. It is a planning master, and this is going to be one of the best plan modes you can have. You also have 5.1 Codex, so kind of their average normal Codex model has been upgraded. It's 5.1, but it is built for programming. Here are the evals for 5.1 when it comes to coding. It is very good and much better than GPT-5 when it comes to the SWE bench. And then it looks like a step up in almost every other benchmark they have. So to me, this is much more than just a 0.1 upgrade, as I said in my video yesterday. So it looks like it's excellent at planning. It looks like it is much better at coding. And then you have 5.1 Codex Mini, which is the model you want to use for smaller coding tasks. So you use 5.1 Codex for your one shot, two hour long programming tasks. You wanna just hand off and Codex takes care of it. You wanna use 5.1 Codex Mini for more of your debugging, making small styling changes, making small tiny tweaks. It will move much faster. The big thing they changed in 5.1, which you'll experience in these three models is for these smaller tasks, 5.1 moves a lot faster and uses less tokens. That's what you'll see in 5.1 Codex Mini. For the larger task, it actually uses more tokens and takes longer, which you might be thinking, what, they're gonna slow it down and make it last longer? But here's the thing, you're saving time in the long run because it's gonna have a much higher chance of doing things the right way the first time around. So overall, you're saving money, you're saving time. These are all great updates to these three models, but how do you use them in practicality? We talked about the benchmarks and the hand waving, the explanations, but how do you use these three models in practicality? Let's jump into Codex and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So I am inside Visual Studio Code. This is my favorite way to use Codex. If you go into Visual Studio Code, completely free, go into the extensions, download Load the Codex extension, click on it once it's installed, you are inside Codex. I'm gonna show you a few things here. We're gonna build an app together. And the reason we're gonna build this app together is one, so I can show you the three different models and how to use them, but two, also show you the new workflow, right? There's a lot of cool things in Codex, including the cloud agents. I'm gonna show you how to use those and how it fits into this brand new workflow with these three new models. So today we're gonna to build a productivity app. I want a full suite productivity app with Kanban organization, with a to-do list, with a calendar. We're gonna build our entire own productivity suite. So we are inside Codex. Few things we want to do here that are important. We want to make sure at first here we are running locally, so that is good to go. Then we have the modes. We're going to go into chat mode. This is where I do the planning inside Codex is in chat mode, so it doesn't change any code. I'm in chat. We're going to select the model. For plan mode, we are going to select GPT 5.1, as we talked about on the last screen. Just plain old 5.1 without Codex is the best planning and creativity model I have ever come across in my life, so we are going to select that. As 
for reasoning level, if you're doing a super serious, huge monster app, you might want to do high. For this one, I'm going to do medium. This is not the craziest, most in-depth app, so I'm doing medium reasoning, but you'll change this based on what you're building out. If you want to build along with me, which I think is the best way to experience these videos I make, I'm going to put the prompt for this down below. I want to build a full suite productivity app. I want it to have a Kanban board, to-do list, and calendar. I want to use Next.js and Tailwind V3. Those are the two technologies we're going to use to build this. Very popular. Codex is great at using them. I want it to look clean with a minimal design that doesn't look like an AI made it. Use local storage for now. We are on the plan mode, the chat mode. I'm going to hit enter. Please make a plan for this. And now I'm going to hit enter on this. Again, we're on the plan mode, which is the chat mode, and we're using 5.1. You really want to use 5.1, no codex, when it comes to the planning because it is so good at creative thinking and creative design. Look at that, and it moves real fast too. That's great. So let's see what we got here in the plan. In the second, we'll go into when to use the codex models. Here's a solid practical plan. Scaffold the app, install and configure Tailwind. That's good. Define a small token set. So colors, one to two colors, neutral grays. I like that. This shouldn't look like AI. None of that blue and purple gradient. Establish a typography. That's good. That's interesting. I don't think I've had many AIs focus on typography before. So that's really cool. These are the type of novel ideas that I've seen with 5.1 the last couple of days, which have been amazing. App structure. So it looks like a dashboard. I like that and it has the data model and all that. Let's do this. I like it. If you'd like next up, I can turn this plan into a concrete project structure and then start implementing it. Let's do this. I'm going to go straight into agent full access. So agent mode is where it has you accept step by step. Agent full access is it just goes hog wild and builds what it wants. I trust 5.1 based on what I've seen so far. We are also going to switch to 5.1 codex, which is their, again, coding model built for larger tasks. We're having it build this entire V1 out. So I'm switching to 5.1 codex and I'm going to say, this plan looks great. Please build it out. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to get to work for us. In a second after this builds out, we're going to start making some small tweaks and edits. I'm going to show you how we're going to use 5.1 Codex Mini for that, which is much better suited for those small tweaks. It'll save you money and it'll save you tokens. One great thing about this is this is more the $20 version of ChatGPT gives you a decent chunk here of usage for Codex. They also have a pay as you go plan for Codex, which works really good as well. So the pricing model on Codex is very nice. I know there's a lot of complaints uh, with other tools when it comes to pricing models. Codex, very good pricing model. One of the other strengths of this build out as well is going to be the cloud agents. And I'm going to show you a good workflow for the cloud agents once this builds out too. So stick around for that. And as it's building, if you learn anything at all so far, make sure to leave a like. It means the world if you leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet. We have, over the last couple of weeks, become the number one vibe coding channel on all of YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications because I live stream a few times a week as well. All right, looks like it is all done here. Let's give this a shot. This was all one shot. Looks like it built out all the files, all the components. I'm going to do control tilde. We're going to do npm run dev i'm gonna hit enter let's get this party so i run 3004 because i'm building 29 different apps at the same time here let's see what this looked like and then we'll get into some cool editing and workflow and trick stuff we can do here and boom here we go this actually looks really nice a couple of things i want to note yes there are some uh stylistic issues here when it comes to uh like the shape of some of these tasks but i'll say one thing for sure this does not look like an AI app. This does not look like an AI built this app at all. There is not one hint of blue or purple. There's not a single gradient. It's just a clean, simple aesthetic with pops of color. That is actually wildly impressive. I know a lot of people claim that I use a lot of hyperbole, but this is the stone cold truth. This might be the best one shot UI I've ever seen an AI make. And yes, there are some broken things here, like the numbers on the calendar or something. Maybe if I expand the window, it'll look better. But from just a style, like a colors perspective, a taste perspective, this might be the best. Oh, there's some things with the colors white on white. I see this a lot with AI, but outside that, I like the black and white. Okay, so let's get back in this. Let's fix, this is perfect. We have some things to fix. Now let's switch to 5.1 Codex Mini in order to fix a lot of these smaller things. So we'll start with the calendar here, right? So I'll screenshot, this is important. Whenever you have bugs, issues, or things you wanna fix, especially on the UI side, make sure you use screenshots. So if you're on Mac, Shift, Control, Command, 
4, which copies a portion of your screen and puts it on your clipboard so that you can just go in here and paste it. And then I'm going to switch to 5.1 Codex Mini, which is great for those small little changes. Watch how quick this goes. I'm going to say, looks like the calendar is all scrunched up. Please fix this so it looks nice. And I'm going to hit enter and we're going to see how fast this is. Should be significantly faster. That was one of the big improvements with 5.1 as well. The smaller models, the instant model is significantly more faster than it was before. So let's see how fast it could do this and if it could make it look nicer in one shot. All right, that took probably about 25 seconds to do. Let's see how it did on those fixes. Okay, let's pull this over and see what we got here. Boom, calendar looking a lot nicer now. Now, instead of having like weird letters all over the days, they now have dots to indicate that there's an event on that day. I like it. It's all clean up here as well. The font looks nice. The colors of the font look nice. The headers and the subheaders here look nice. This is really well done. This was a really well done uh, by GPT-5 Codex and Codex meaning to clean up a lot of the issues here. Oh, I also like little things like the day view where it shows you the one event on the day. That's nice. We went over the three models and the kind of workflow behind them. Let's also talk about the cloud agents, which is a feature that makes Codex very, very unique. Other tools have cloud agents, but what makes Codex unique is the agents are actually integrated into the IDE experience. With the other tools like Claude Code, for instance, you, you spin up agents on the web. You have to go to a separate website to spin them up. What's interesting about Codex, though, is you have cloud agents integrated directly into the ID. So I can set up some tasks for the cloud agents and set up some tasks locally, side by side, all in the same environment, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna go into run in the cloud here. I'm going to switch to the Codex Cal environment, which is the GitHub repository. I put this code on to use the cloud agents. You need to make sure your code is on GitHub. If you never did that before, Go on github.com, sign up, create a new repository, and then all you literally have to do is tell Codex, commit this code to the new repository, and it will do that for you. Once you have that on there, you can switch to the run in cloud environment with your repository selected, and we can start spinning up tasks that agents will do in the cloud. Now, the way I like to think about this is I like to give the cloud agents small tasks it can do on the side while I do main tasks locally inside my IDE. So for instance, maybe I I want to say add a dark mode to the app. Since we're on the cloud, I can just hit send on this. And now we have a cloud agent working on that small task for us. But now we can actually spin up multiple things here. So I'm going to go back while that cloud agent's getting started. You can see it's starting to work there. And I'm going to say, make it so I have a weekly view in the calendar. Right, and then actually what I can do here is I can say do two versions instead of one, or you could do up to four if you'd like. And now what's going to happen is the cloud agent will actually build this multiple times, and then I can choose which version I like the best. That's really cool, especially for UI components. If you're ever building something in the UI, try to do multiple versions because then you can make sure you get the best version of it and get the best UI possible. And now while all that's running, I have one cloud agent building a dark mode, another cloud agent building a new component with multiple attempts. I'm going back, I'm switching to my local environment and then I'm gonna go and start building out bigger features now. Now I can say build a full marketing landing page for the app. Make sure I am on Codex, the regular version, because this is going to be a pretty big task. And I'm going to hit enter. And now what you see happening as we speak here, we have two cloud agents up on the internet building out small UI tasks for us, some of them building out multiple versions. And now we're wor working locally with the local Codex to build out an entire marketing page. This is how you multiply your productivity. This is how you get the most out of these new 5.1 codex models. Now all we need to do while these are working is I can go here, I can switch to our cloud task, and once they're done, we choose the version we like the best, and then we can pull the code down to our local environment, test it, and commit it. It really is that simple. That's the workflow that's worked best for me for Codex and these three new models. Now, as for Codex versus Claude Code, this is a massive improvement for Codex. I really like the results I'm getting from 5.1, especially the 5.1 Codex and the 5.1 models. Codex Mini, 
I am still getting a couple errors where it's just like getting confused at times. I think there can be some improvement there, but 5.1 for planning and 5.1 codex are excellent. I'm going to be honest from a pure results perspective. I'm still liking the results I'm getting from Sonnet 4.5 in Claude code a little bit more. I'll give you a quick side-by-side -side comparison of some of the things I've done with Claude code and some of the things I've done with codex. I'm building a landing page for my Vibe Coding Academy, which I'm launching in a couple weeks. It's going to have full courses on both Claude Code and Codex as well as an entire community involved. This is what the landing page looks like that Codex built. This is what the landing page looks like that Claude Code built. I prefer this a little bit more. I think it's a stronger landing page. I think it looks nicer. It looks more natural and easy to use. This is still strong, but for me, from a design perspective, I don't enjoy the way it looks as much. There's some issues with it. There's, it's very text heavy. It's not quite as easy to read. So for me personally, in my workflow, I'm getting a little bit better results from Claude Code. Those are my comparisons, but there's still a lot of strengths with each. Also, by the way, if you want to be the first to know about the Vibe Coding Academy, sign up for my newsletter link down below in the description. You'll be the first to know about it. But if you are a fan of the Codex workflow and the way it works with the cloud agents, I could see why you'd want to stick with that and use that instead. Just for me, my personal workflow, I'm getting some better results on my benchmarks from Sonnet 4.5 still, but Codex is starting to close that gap. I just prefer Claude Code a little bit more at the moment. But with that being said, if you want to stay ahead in this game, you need to be taking advantage of every single tool. You need to be trying out every single tool and seeing which ones... A, you liked the most to use, and B, get the most productivity boosts out of. There's a lot of people that get the most productivity boosts out of Cursor, get the most productivity boosts out of Amp Code. Maybe Codex is your jam for me. I'm getting the most out of Claude Code, but it really is about what works for you. I actually have a workflow where I'm using Codex and Claude Code side by side to get some amazing results. I'm going to make a video on that soon. So that is Codex. 5.1 with the three new models they just released. 5.1 in the chat bot, again, if you saw my video yesterday, is my favorite AI model just to straight up chat with, get creative ideas with. You need to be using it right now. The other two, make sure you get Codex to try those out, see what you think. I'll have a lot more videos coming up in the next few days about using Codex and all the other AI coding tools, so make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications for that. And let me know down in the replies, what have been your experience so far with Codex? I'll see you in the next video.